Hi everyone. We're going to go over the redefining of the Horus and Yoda's character through the High Republic. And if you're like me who really knows and loves the original lore and especially Yoda's character who is this, you know, this mystic Miyagi, you know, wisdom kind of character that everybody seeks to talk to, who guides and everything like that. Um, you're not going to like the way they're taking his character in this part of the lore and which leads up to the PTOT, everything that was George Lucas's. You're not going to like it. It's retconning it. So let's take a look. Star Wars The High Republic will utterly redefine the Force. Star Wars The High Republic is about to completely redefine the Force, revealing the limits of Obi-Wan and Yoda's perspective. So basically, they're limiting, um, they're revealing the limits of the perspective of the Force. Um, not that they're, you know, veterans and know about the Force, trained other, and not that the Force is something that's con constant, that is, um, is an energy field that everybody believes in and experiences. They're wrong, you guys, they are wrong. All right, according to this. The upcoming, the upcoming Star Wars transmedia initiative, The High Republic, will redefine our understanding of the Force. Star Wars is a unique franchise, a blend of science fiction and fantasy unlike anything else. Its central heroes are not just starfighter pilots, but they are also Jedi Knights, beings who are able to wield the Force. The most basic definition of the Force was given in the very Star Wars movie all the way back in 1977. Well, the Force is what gives a Jedi his power. It is an energy field created by all living things. It surrounds us and penetrates us. It binds the galaxy together. Obi-Wan Kenobi. For decades, every Star Wars film and tie-ins that explore the Force has really expanded upon the definition, but it seems the story of the High Republic will explore how different people perceive the Force, completely redefining their understanding of the phenomenon. So everybody, the Force is now a phenomenon. It's not um, something that's mystical, spiritual. Um, that everybody can relate to and is seen the same anymore. Um, you know, when you look at the Force and you look at Force users in the lore, um, they had their relationship with the Force. Yes, they did. But how it was looked and perceived was the same. The only thing that was diverse with it is how um, strong the person was in the Force. So if a Jedi, you know, wasn't that strong, or didn't or I wouldn't say wasn't that strong and a good example is Corn Horn I always use him so every Jedi had their unique talents that's their relationship with the force they had their unique abilities some Jedi's were stronger some Jedi's had unique um, force abilities some didn't some were limited like I said Corn Horn was limited to, in the force yet he still made I guess you could say the cut to be a Jedi now the force is going to be experienced very differently and it's gonna be turned into more of a diverse way of how everybody experiences it instead of it being one constant um, energy. All right, so let's go, let's go ahead and read further. Speaking at the High Republic panel in the New York City Comic-Con 2020, author Charles Soule explained the traditional definition is actually based on Yoda's perception of the force. Insert video here. Other Jedi perceive the Force in different ways and relate to the Force in different ways. One of the central characters in Soul's novel, Light of the Jedi, is Avar Chris, who experiences the Force as music. The hills are alive with the sound of music. She calls it the Song of the Force. Soul explained, and so for her, all the different Jedi have their own tones and instruments, and it all comes together into this great symphony and dis of dissonance and assonance and all those beautiful things that she is able to perceive. 
all the other characters have their distinctive relationship with the Force as well. Sol also points to the example of the Wookiee Padawan Buryaga Agaberry, which does not sound very Wookiee-ish name at all. In fact, Wookiees don't have two names. They don't have a surname. All right. Who sees the forest as great as a great forest with him himself as one leaf of a great tree. And so I watched the video that is linked to this video or this article here. And so each one of them explains their character that they're expanding on more so than anybody else and how they're connecting or how they are diversely connecting to the force instead of it, the force being constant, everybody feeling it the same because the force basically surrounds and binds and when you look into the lore there's the midichlorian yes i'm going to use that as an example and maybe you guys will probably respect it a lot more now because it's from the original lore and it gives us a basic structure on how beings experience the force through their own body so now it's it's all in the mind so you're you love music so not everybody is tied to music the force is music to you you are from a planet full of trees like Kashyyyk. So now you perceive the force as that. Instead of the force being taught in one harmonious way in a order that um, connects and makes sense to everybody, that links everybody together into the force. And I'm maybe some of you guys will like this direction. I don't think it, I think it just deconstructs the force as well. That's my perspective. I don't think this is a good, good way of um, tearing the force up and making it in different aspects. We even know inside the lore, like different force societies, again, these are societies separate from the Jedi. Um, they look at the force in similar ways, but they use it differently. Like the Anting monks, they um, see it um, different. They use it differently. Um, they respect it just the same. And then you have um, the Dathomirian witches that they use more of the dark side of the force. Um, so their perspective um, is more dark side, but they still see the force as an energy field that they can use and um, at their whim. And now, these be now it's being said that these characters are going to be using or seeing the force in different ways. So how is that? Um, how is that being taught in the order? I, are, are they saying basically, oh, how you see it is your correct way and how you see it is your correct way instead of, you know, having that philosophy and the force being that energy field. Now Yoda is wrong. And so we'll get more into that. The High Republic novel and comics are set 200 years before events of Star Wars Episode I, The Phantom Menace. Presumably, all these different perspectives on the Force were lost over time as Yoda became too dominant. Again, I'm going to repeat that. As Yoda became too dominant. The Grandmaster who counseled others and the teacher who taught all the Padawans how to understand the Force. The prequel trilogy presented the Jedi as diminished, a shadow of their former greatness, but the story of the High Republic looks set to reveal the extent to which that was the case. So basically they are saying that Yoda is who created the fall of the Jedi Order, of the Jedi themselves, because he was too dominant and so he, you know, exerted his dominance onto the order and just only taught him, them, his per perspective. For my ally is the force and the powerful ally it is. Life creates it, makes it grow. Its energy surrounds us and binds us. Luminous beings so we, not this crude matter. You must the force around you, you, between you, me, it's me, everywhere, yes, and even between the land and the ship. So think about that. 
you know, when we see his um, person, what his view, and he he shares how the force works. Mind you, he's sharing how the force works. The force doesn't work through music. The force doesn't work as, you know, um, what you perceive it to work at. The force. He explains how the force works. Um, it's wrong now, and because of that, the Jedi fell. So he is the reason. He is the reason for the fall of the Jedi. So let that sink in. The Jedi have lost their sense of individuality within the Force, attempting to conform their own relationship with it to the pattern set by Yoda. Little wonder so many of them chaffed under it. Again, it's Yoda's fault. Yoda did nothing wrong, but it's his fault, according to them. And this is where I tell you to brace yourselves. So like I said, it's his fault. He dominated them. He forced his own opinion of the force on them. And so they fell. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Instead of allowing them to have their own diverse experience with the force. Because, of course, the Jedi Order is not an order. They're not all taught the same. They're not... Um, all taught that the force binds you and stuff no that was just yoda's perspective and how he taught them with that very same example philosophy that's what made the order fall think about that think about that when disney acquired lucasfilm in 2012 they wiped the slate clean and started again with the canon now though every book film and tv series is equally canon meaning this redefinition of the force is a bind is as binding as star wars franchise as if it happened on the big screen itself so anything that you read is binding just like the old eu it's binding to the movies and um so you know the rule of two being a dyad it's true so bringing back darth bane he's yeah he still created the rule of two but it's not the same way we originally read it in the original lore. And um, yes, they have every right to change it. Do I agree with it? No, that's why I'm making this video. The High Republic Initiative is possibly the most important event since the launch of sequel trilogy and certainly the most exciting. It is bold and confident, daring to redefine the Force, the concept that lies at the heart of Star Wars. It's going to be thrilling to get a fresh glimpse into the infinite mysteries that is the Force. So what is the Force? What exactly is the Force? We hear Yoda, which I played the clip already. We hear, we hear through um, Obi-Wan, which basically is the same philosophy, but in his word on how the force works through beings and how the force is perceived and looked at and felt and experienced. So what is the force? So the force is viewed in many aspects of it. We have the light and the dark, which we know the light is balanced. The dark is not balanced. And we see that arc through the six movies, which is, you know, basically Anakin's um, fall redemption story, as well as Luke's hero's journey and redemption um, of his father. And we also see that um, we have the living force is one aspect of it. We have the unifying force. We have the cosmic force and the physical force. And each one of them is used in a certain way by Jedi. It's like, for example, the physical force is how a force user um, uses the force physically. The cosmic force is basically when, um, when you basically leave the world and transcend as a force goes basically. Um, the unifying force is um, basically the force that is within the stars, that's in the universe, basically the energy that surrounds and binds. And then the living force is basically everything that, um, any, everything that's living, you know, that has embodiment of the force. Um, so we have those little aspects of the force there as well. And it ties beautifully. Um, it is spiritual. It is metaphysical. It is um, binding, which basically holds enormous important enormous importance to the lore of um, Star Wars for the Jedi, for the Dark Siders or the Sith, for the many Force societies that we learned about in the original lore. And to take this and um, 
deconstruct it to where now the force is many things to many people kind of take away the structure from the Jedi and again it takes away um, Yoda's importance it does now he is the reason why the Jedi fall on the PT yeah and so I would like to know what you guys think about this um, leave it in the comments below do you think it is something neat to explore that everybody experiences the force um, in those different ways you know and that the Jedi fell because of Yoda dominating the order and imposing his ideology his philosophy on them and not allowing them to be individuals so think about it when you look at the bigger picture of this they are diminishing all of George Lucas's characters and lore so they so their characters can look better and so when you look at everything that came before the PT you know they're creating their own lore they're retconning all the lore that's in the movies and then when you get past George Lucas's movies and you get into the uh, post Return of the Jedi sequel trilogy era. Again, you see the same the pattern. Everything that is related to George Lucas's um, characters, lore, and stuff again is re retconned. The characters are being um, dumbed down, I guess you could say, or regressed so that their characters can shine. And we even see that now with what they're doing with Yoda. So, again, leave your comments below. What do you think? Is, you know, obviously this is a reconstruction of the lore and um, retcon of everything George has done. May the force be with you.